Today, we will learn and reflect on the book Sold Out, which is a testimonial autobiography by Coach Bill McCartney, who is the founder of the national ministry that reaches out to young men, Promise Keepers. So, what can we learn from this autobiography, Sold Out? When he was a football coach, Bill McCartney became friends and a father figure for many black athletes he recruited for his national football team in the University of Colorado. Many of them came from destitute families in the slums, and because of this experience, he deeply felt that somehow this country needed to be more welcoming and understanding towards our black brothers, which is a core teaching of Promise Keepers. I personally am not part of the leadership of Promise Keepers. I simply have attended several of their events over the years. The title is not meant to imply that Promise Keepers endorses the formal organization Black Lives Matter. Rather, the title is used in a generic sense. At the end of our talk, we will discuss the sources we used for our videos and my blog that cover this topic. Also, we welcome interesting questions in the comments. Let us learn and reflect together. Our country is so incredibly divided. In today's racially charged atmosphere, many people who are not believers wonder, are white evangelicals racist? Do all white evangelical leaders oppose the Black Lives Matter movement? And here again, I'm talking about black lives in a generic sense rather than a specific sense. There are many evangelical leaders who do support the philosophy of the Black Lives Matter movement. In particular, the Promise Keepers movement has explicitly endorsed racial reconciliation with our black brothers for decades. Promise Keepers was founded in 1990 by coach Bill McCartney. He was the head coach of the University of Colorado with a winning record from 1982 to 1994. His football team won three consecutive Big 8 conference titles and the national championship in 1990. While attending a Fellowship of Christian Athletes uh, banquet, he discussed with David Wardell the idea of Promise Keepers, an organization that would organize conferences that would train and teach young men on what it means to be godly husbands, godly fathers, and godly men. Now, many black athletes see college and professional sports as their ticket out of poverty. Many blacks who attend college on athletic scholarships up to that point have only known poverty. They've attended substandard ghetto schools and really have a hard life and often have a difficult time in college. Bill McCartney witnessed firsthand how the lack of opportunity for these black families affected his black athletes. One of his primary goals when founding Promise Keepers was to somehow bridge this racial gap. This is reflected in the seven promises of Promise Keeper. And this is the sixth promise. A promise keeper is committed to reaching beyond any racial and denominational barriers to demonstrate the power of biblical unity. At the first promise keeper conference, although Coach McCartney was elated by the attendance and fervor of those attending, the one thing that sent a chill down his spine was that the crowd was almost entirely white. Coach McCartney addressed these young men, saying that next year at Folsom Stadium, we expect a sellout. But I believe that if we fail to gather a fair representation of all of God's people, God will not join us. In his book, Coach McCartney continues, The elated crowd left on a wave of exhilaration that would only be multiplied in years to come. But my last remarks on the racial issue had clearly hit a raw nerve, igniting a minor firestorm of hate mail and caustic letters, chastising me, saying, how dare you imply that in a stadium filled with men glorifying Jesus Christ, that God won't be there? And others stated angrily, God did not state in the scriptures, Go ye therefore and eradicate racism. He said, Go preach the gospel to all nations. Coach McCartney remembers, shortly after the Promise Keeper's first stadium conference of 22,000 men in 1992, again, a mostly white audience, a much heavier burden fell upon me. I began to see many of the subtle ways our culture inflicts pain, shame, and lack of opportunity on the minority communities in our midst, and it horrified me to see this dynamic thriving in the church as well. 
Coach McCartney also remembers in his autobiography, with the help of the Christian broadcaster James Dobson, I began scheduling speaking engagements at churches around the country, delivering a controversial message on racial reconciliation. I would show up to churches filled with men eager to hear about the marvelous movement of God called Promise Keepers, and I would begin to share. I spoke from my experience as a football coach, recognizing in my players' faces a conditioned re resignation towards cultural injustice. I tried to explain how a subtle spirit of white superiority has unwittingly alienated and wounded our brothers and sisters within the church, and how the 10 o'clock hour on Sunday morning is the country's most segregated hour. My heart is broken for why I am standing here today, I cried out. The church is standing on the shore while the tides are taking our brothers and sisters of color out to the sea. We must get in touch with reality. We have oppressed men and women of color. We will not have revival until we have reconciliation. But always when I finished, there was no response. Nothing. No applause. No smiles. Everyone instead looked crestfallen. In city after city, in church after church, it was the same story. Wild enthusiasm while I was being introduced, followed by a morgue-like chill as I stepped away from the microphone. And Coach McCartney continues. As my speaking tour came to a close, I had an engagement at a church in Portland, Oregon. My message ended to the usual wall of silence. Yet, before I could leave the podium, a black speaker at the back of the stage stood up. I paused as he began to walk toward me. He approached the podium and stood there for what seemed like minutes trying to gather himself. After a long delay, he finally said, I never thought that in my lifetime I would ever hear a white man say what this man has said. And he, he was quite emotional. He paused to compose himself. The church was stone silent. In a tone that broke my heart, he concluded, maybe there is hope. As of 1997, the racial message remained a highly charged element of the Promise Keepers ministry. Recent correspondence, and the book was written right about that time, correspondence told us of the 1996 conference participants who had a complaint, nearly 40% reacted negatively to the racial reconciliation theme. I personally believe that it was a major factor in the significant fall-off in Promise Keepers' 1997 attendance. Racial reconciliation is simply a hard teaching for many in the church. Coach McCartney's book sold out as a personal testimonial on how he also recommitted himself to the Lord, his life experiences as a football coach and as the founder of Promise Keepers, and his very human responses to the extreme stresses this very hectic and public life placed on him and his family. Even though he was the leader of Promise Keepers at the time, he had some problems with social drinking, but his very successful football career responsibilities of a winning head coach meant that he was often out of town. And when in town, he rarely made it home for dinner and never made it home for dinner on the weekends during football season. Also included in the books are sections penned by his wife, Lindy. Football was her life also because she really wanted to support her husband and encourage him. Her father had been forced to abandon a low-paying job that he had loved. And she had seen how that really destroyed his spirit, so she thought it would be unthinkable to insist that he change his career course for her. But then Coach McCartney started a Promise Keepers, and the scheduling issues worsened. Recruiting was year-round, but at least at the end of football season, that meant that he was around the family a little bit more. But Promise Keepers was really a year-round endeavor. He needed to speak at all the conferences. Coach McCartney writes, So, the head of Promise Keepers, the ministry teaching young men to be better husbands and fathers and spend more time with his family, finally noticed that Lindy had locked herself in her room for months on end. They both went to marriage counseling so he could learn how to be a better husband and father. Finally, Coach McCartney decided that at the end of a winning season, and at the very height of his successful college football coaching career, he would step away from football altogether to devote his full-time efforts to his family and to Promise Keepers. Now, my early experience with Promise Keepers is I attended an event with the church group in the early days when they were able to partially fill large football stadiums with their events. 
There were always very few young black men who attended the conference, but it was not for lack of trying. The conference booked black preachers as speakers, and blacks have always been a part of the leadership and promise keepers. Racial reconciliation has always been a main theme of the events. Now, getting the races to mix socially or at church can be devilishly difficult. I encountered a similar experience in my 20th uh, high school reunion. Desegregation was happening when I attended junior and senior high school. There was another black high school reunion in a ballroom near ours, and there was all kind of dancing and celebration. But in our white high school reunion ballroom, the tone was more subdued. But none of the blacks who attended our high school felt enough of a connection to attend the reunion. Promise Keepers, in my observation, was plagued by the been there, done that tendency. Many men only attended one conference. At the movement's peak, they had an event in Washington, D.C. that they promoted a million-man march. Probably 600 to 800,000 men attended. Coach McCartney was so frustrated about the lack of black participation that he made the conference fees optional for the next few conferences, but still they did not attract many black attendees. But the rent on the stadiums hosting these events were sky high, and the waiving of fees destroyed the finances of the organization, leading to massive paid staff layoffs, and this left a bad taste for many who suffered financially because of this managerial misstep. Promise Keepers, after that, never regained its old enthusiasm, and each year they held fewer and fewer conferences. Some years ago, Coach McCartney has had to resign entirely from the organization due to serious age-related health problems. Currently, Promise Keepers is holding events. For the past few conferences, they at least try to have the keynote speaker be a young black minister, plus they have one or more other black speakers. The ministry has been struggling for the past few years. They've held only one national event, and let us pray that they will have more events in future years. Now to discuss the sources we used for this video. On Amazon you can buy Sold Out by Coach McCartney for like a dollar plus shipping and it is written very well with many good life lessons on how to live a godly life in today's world including some good marital advice that we covered a little bit in the video. And of course we have the Promise Keepers website which we have featured in this talk and we'll have in the description also. Please click on the link for our blog and also the books we reviewed, if you wish, in the description below. And please subscribe to our channel and consider becoming a patron. And please click on the links for other interesting videos that will broaden your knowledge and improve your soul. Thank you.